Hello, my fellow nerds out there. This is Oracle Nerd Richie, and welcome to another part of Let's Play. Uh, dang it, I have a brain fart. Vincent, the Secret of Myers. In the last part, we took a questionnaire from the butler, and thankfully, we didn't die. So, so now in this part, we're going to be exploring Branch One, which on the right, which is Vincent's past. I want to say. Basically what Vincent knows about the company. We don't know much much else, but we're gonna find out now, so let's just get right into it. Branch one. Right, is it? Looks like you're more interested in Mr. Edgeworth. From the information we've gathered so far, Vincent seems to be most closely involved with the G4 in cyborg incident. I believe investigating the legal department would give us the answers we want. I see. I'll have to agree. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Just as Draco and I reached an agreement, the intercom and Myers' lobby went off without a warning. <sighs> Welcome to the Myers Corporation. As, 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 as the number one trusted source for mechanical prosthetics, we define global standards and create first, first, first class corporation image. Design, create, enhance Myers Corporation. Please enjoy your visit and have a wonderful, 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 painful day. Um. Um. I don't like this. From the far end of the employee passageways in the distance comes a heart-ending howl. Oh no! Impossible! What have they done to him? Draco's face suddenly become very serious. They? To him? Draco, what is going on? There's no time to explain, Leia. Go! Now! Wait a minute. Draco! Before I could finish, Draco pushed me to the right of the room in the lobby, then then punched a button in front of the desk. In the front desk. Draco! Leia, don't you want to know the truth? Don't you want to know who you are? Then go. If your life ends here now, all your efforts will be in vain. But what about you? I'm just a butler. Please don't worry about me. I'll try my best to hold him back. But, but... Leia, I like... Like you, I am a person without a past. <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago that my life could only be described in, as an empty, monotonous, and boring. But the arrival of this one person changed everything around for me. She helped me break free from that blank world and made me realize that nothing is more important than the present. She is very important to me, and I can't lose her a second time. Draco. Do we know each other? In response to my question, Draco smiled. My name is Draco Edgeworth. It is pleased to meet you, Lady Leia. Whoa! It was just the access. Draco! Draco! But only silence answers my cries. Chapter 2, The End Draco Edgeworth From the moment I saw him, I thought he somehow looked very familiar to Vi very similar to Vincent. I had no idea that Vincent and him were really related by blood. Are they brothers? But what kind of person would make his own brother a butler? Leia, like you, I am a person without a past. 
It wasn't that long ago that my life could be described as empty, monotonous, and boring. But the arrival of this one person changed everything around for me. She helped me break free from a blank world. <clears throat> made me realize that nothing is more important than the present. She is very important to me. I can't lose her a second time. <laughs> Draco? What exactly did all that mean? Draco! Draco! I banged on the gate again and again, but there was no response. Damn it! This can't be it. There has to be a way. I groped along the nearby walls, but didn't find any switch to re reopen the gate. Draco. I felt disheartened at how powerless I was. How he was right there, yet I couldn't help him. What the hell? Why is the gate locked? Whoa, whoa, who are you? Suddenly I was taken aback by the appearance of an odd looking person from the other side of the room. Before I could say anything, she ran around me and rushed to the gate. Hey, hey, let me out! She was yelling and banging, as if she was completely unaware of my presence. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Hey! After carrying on for a while, but, but earning no response, she finally decided to give up. <sighs> she was breathing heavily when she turned around, staring straight at me with her bright and burning eyes. Was it you? Were you the one who locked me in here? She demanded. Shit, I may be in trouble. Just when I thought I had to come up with a plan to deal with her, her face looked as if it suddenly realized something. Her eyes were still focused on me, but this time she was looking me up and down. Hmm? Have we met before? She asked. She suddenly asked. What, what did she just say? Her very surprising comment left me speechless for a moment. It was not something I expected to hear from her. Uh, I... Calm down, calm down. This is critical. I can't miss my chance. In other words, I might be able to learn something about my past from her. I need to be careful. I don't have any idea whether she's a friend or foe yet. And judging from how she acted, she seems that she only had a casual acquaintance with me as well. It may not be the best idea to just start throwing questions at her about myself. More importantly, if I expose the fact that I lost my memory, things may only work against me. So a safer strategy right now would be to get information out of her in a less straightforward way. Oh, hi. It's been a while. Do you still remember me? I tried my best to stay calm and greeted her. She looked all over me again, and then her eyes rested on my face. You do seem kind of familiar. Let me see. Oh, hey, detective. Suddenly, she suddenly exclaimed with excitement. I remember now, I knew it. You were the one with that famous lawyer last time. As was expected of me, Zelmona, I knew we've met before. Oh, I like her voice. I like her voice. It's really nice. <laughs> Zelmona? Is that her name? More importantly, did she just say I'm a detective? My brain felt as if it couldn't handle all this information that I had just received at once. I never thought I would be a cop. Was I involved in a case? Did something happen during my investigation that caused me to lose my memories? But wait a minute. She mentioned that I was with the famous lawyer. Could she be requesting for to... But, detective... Zamora's voice interrupted my thoughts and dragged my mind back to reality. I'm curious, what brings you back to Myers Corporation this time? Back to Myers. Think, think, think. I need to come up with an answer. If 
I were a cop, I would be the only one explanation for coming back here. I'm here to investigate the case of the missing citizens so, over recent years, and the truth behind the G4 cyborg incident. Huh? Huh? Again? My God, the G4 investigation bureau is a u is as useless as ever. Detective, then it looks like your last investigation will be with that lawyer didn't go so well. Why didn't you bring him along this time? The famous lawyer. Are you by chance referring to Mr. Vincent Edgeworth? Of course. Who else can it be? So it seems that my speculation was correct. Vincent and I had indeed met before. In following this logic, it would make sense that I met Draco as well. If that's the case, why would Vincent hide everything from me and pretend that he didn't know me? I suddenly remembered about, about the cyborg that I saw at the mansion and how Vincent and Victor refused to explain anything about it. Myers has gone bankrupt years ago, and it is clear that someone is still using the abandoned site for some kind of experiments. Draco told me Myers Corporation had become a secret underground organization after the huge incident. But even if that's true, how can I explain the cyborg in Vincent's mansion? Could it be that... As a detective, I was actually investigating Vincent and not the Myers Corporation? If we go with that explanation, Vincent is most likely the person behind my memory loss. The more I thought about it, the more I worried I became. But there's something that is especially been bothering me. Ooh. If you had asked me what kind of person Vincent was, I would have answered... Noble, elegant, and mysterious. His words, while exuding charm, uh, could make you feel very uneasy at the same time. Is he someone we should be suspicious of? Of course, there's no doubt about it. Knowing Winston was innocent, he single-handedly succeeded in proving that, that the entire experiment was the work of a single employee. How scary is this man for him to be able to do something like that? Nonetheless, when I met him at the mansion, I felt like there was a subtle connection between us that I couldn't explain. I'm well aware of what, that I have lost all my memories. I have no idea about our past and have to reason to draw such conclusions. But this feeling was particularly strong. It was as if the part of my brain that stored memories had disappeared. But the part of the stored memories was still intact. Okay, I wasn't a good screenshot. Probably not going to use that as a thumbnail. Anyways, I have to learn about Vincent's past. It is vital for me to know. Zelmona, did you just come from the legal department? Huh? Huh? Yeah! Are you planning to go there? <coughs> yes, can you take me there? It's simple. Just go through the door right here and you will reach the legal department. However, <laughs> She pulled out the card from her pocket. Only by swiping this key card can you unlock the door. How did you get that? No comment, Miss Detective. You know, I haven't even yet dealt with, with you for locking us in here. But considering you're from the G4 Investigation Bureau, I can make a deal with you. Just like last time, you do me a favor and I'll do you a favor. How's that? Last time? Really? Have you forgotten already? Last time you did me a little favor, and in exchange I told you some secrets about Myers Corporation. Let's do the same, same this time. Truth is, I accidentally lost one of my belongings here. If you can help me find it, then I'll give you this key card as a reward. <coughs> Before I can greet anything, tell me, what exactly have you lost? Oh, a round spherical object. What's that look all about? I know, I know, it does sound kind of vague. But trust me, the moment you see it, you'll instantly realize. Aha! This must be what Zamona was looking for. This, this time I'll take your word for it. 
and this thing is something that you did indeed lose. Just, just stop asking so many questions. You're making a deal here. We're making a deal here. Not playing twenty questions, all right? What? Don't you want the key card, huh? All right. Then are you here? Are you sure you left the spherical object in this lab? No doubt about it. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in this lab. Draco told me both sides of the lobby would eventually lead, lead us to the basement, where the secret chamber of the G4C type organization is located. In other words, not only will I be able to find a lot of clues there, but I could also get out of this place through, through the other side of the Myers lobby. At this moment, still, nothing could be heard from the other side of the gate. I don't know what has happened to Draco. Would I ever see him again? Anyway, time for us to search this for this spherical object. Objective: Five Zomano's item. What are these? A robotic arm. Nothing special about it. Ooh. Ventilation and duct opening. Nothing special about it. Maybe we can get out of here by crawling through this opening. I don't think we'll fit through. You mean you won't fit through? Or me? I don't think either of us will fit through. Huh? For real? Ooh! Ooh, I like that smooth transition! A trophy. A trophy has a diamond shape engraved on it, but there isn't any text. Detective, who do you think this trophy is for? I'm not sure. Maybe it's for the employee of the month? Employee of the month? Perhaps the winner gets a free ticket to the basement. <laughs> a drawer. It's locked. A cupboard under the drawer. I opened and took a look. There was nothing in it. Look, there's nothing in it. This. You know, the door itself doesn't seem locked, but because of the fixture on top, it couldn't be opened. Um, okay, let's look. Oh! There's a panel here! Contemporary art is really getting more and more pretentious. Detective, what do you think these four art pieces mean? I think it's some kind of device. Some kind of device? Look here, there are two buttons under each piece. <clears throat> oh? Let me try pressing one of them. Ooh! It changes the color! Color of the art has changed. Then we're both pressing the other one. The shape changed this time. I understand now. I think we're supposed to match each shape to a corresponding color. It's not that difficult. We just need to try all the combinations and we should be able to get the, find the right answer. No, it ha it's not as simple as that. Eh? We can change each shape. The shape is each art, but we can also change their colors. What it means is that we not only need to need to match each shape, but the color that it corresponds to. We also need to, add a, need to find a specific order of art pieces, perhaps by color. If that's the case, there has to be more, more than possible answers. Correct. It would be very impractical to just try each of them one by one. Okay, wait, so there's a door here? So, green, red, blue, yellow? Little bit and took a look. There's nothing in it. It had a lock on it, so I thought there would certainly be goodies inside. You're not exactly wrong. Huh? What do you mean? Look here. The lock on this drawer is, has been pried open. You're right! Then it looks like someone has looted this place. Whoever broke the lock must have taken the good stuff inside. Right. That's not where it came from, so... So all these are robotic arms, there's nothing special about them. Oh, 
Ooh. Hmm. Wait, wait a second. Okay, but the trophy's a hint, so di diamond is yellow? It should be fourth. So yellow diamond. Can be opened. Can I look at the fixture on top? Oh! Oh, this one has the key on it! Ooh! A key! It's only a key. I'll take that. I'll take a key. Okay, can I unlock this drawer with it? Yes! There's a scalpel. A cassette tape. Tape in here. I load the tape into the boombox and proceed to press the play button. <coughs> Sporadically, sounds started coming off one by one. On July 20th, approximately 2300 hours, minor explosions, prison area. The whereabouts, Myers research, sentenced to life, remain unknown. The voice coming out was very faint and indistinct. I could only make out a few vague words. Huh? What the hell's wrong with this boombox? It can't. I can't understand shit. Here, I'll fix it. Jesus. With that, Zomona started banging on the boombox. Zomona, wait! I tried to protect the boombox with my arms. Wait. Another flashback. On July 20th, 2081, approximately 2300 hours, several minor explosions occurred around the G4 prison area, destroying part of the prison wall. What about Winston Loomis, former Myers researcher, mastermind G4 Hamburg incident, who was sentenced to life, remain unknown. The possibility that he died in the explosion cannot be ruled out until he is, the site is cleared. The police department. The police completed the cleanup of the explosion scene. Bionic prosthetic fragments and explosives were found, confirming that Winston has absconded. The fugitive is still at large and the police have yet to find any information leading to his arrest. What? <gasps> Victor! Vincent! My dear Vincent, tell me, this news doesn't happen to be connected to you in any way, does it? <clears throat> I have no knowledge of this. I've only just heard about the news as well. Oh, is that so? Then would you mind explaining to me how this man is right here in your mansion? Dude, it's Winston! I just happened to run into Mr. Loomis on my way back. What an amazing twist of fate, wouldn't you agree, Mr. Loomis? <laughs> Winston Loomis. Oh, quite the twist of fate indeed. My dear Vincent Edgeworth, don't you know what the what Winston should be rotting in prison right now? What can I say? Sometimes I don't pay much attention to such minuscule details. Not paying a, much attention. You can't be serious! Have you forgotten that you were the one who put Winston in prison? Vincent, look me in the eyes. You might have always been good at lying to other people. But we both know very well that you can never do it in front of me. You've always been like that, and this is no exception. I have no idea what you're talking about. I've been looking you in the eyes the whole this whole time. 
No, you haven't. I have. You haven't. I have. You... <sighs> you know, my friend, I would always support you no matter what choice you make. And I always have, ever since we met each other in college. But all of this is just pure madness. I understand what Maya did to you is absolutely unforgivable. But do you realize that there's also no turning back to the path you're going? The moment you choose revenge, you are no longer different, different from your enemies. Vincent Edgeworth, it is, in, it is already a miracle that you survived from the disaster. You could still achieve so much in your future. Do you really want to be at war with Myers forever? Or do you really think you could take on the entire Myers Corporation on your own? Don't be ridiculous. You were just sacrificing your life for nothing. Oh, he's getting serious. <sighs> then join me, Victor. What? Then join me. I need you. I may look like an idiot who's never who's in over his head to you, but I just no longer wish to be pushed around. Do you really think Myers is going to let me go after all of that? If I choose to do nothing, I will definitely be dead sooner than later. But if I succeed in mastering his, this technology, I can become the one in charge. I can become better than Maya's. You're right, Victor. I can't do that on my own. I need the mind of Winston Loomis, but beyond that, I need another man. Someone I know I can trust. Someone I know I can entrust to my life. Vincent, have you gone mad? Don't you realize who I am? Do you understand how dangerous a decision like this is? I believe the world is, is an equilibrium, a dynamic equilibrium. And eventually, you will realize that good and evil are but two changing rhythms. I trust you, Victor, and I'm sure we can find the equilibrium that's just right. <sighs> That's right. How could I forget? Vincent Edgeworth never regrets his choice. But it's been a long time since I've seen you like that. It's going to be an incredibly long and difficult path. But this time, Vincent Edgeworth, I am willing to walk alongside you. Thank you, Victor. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. I said thank you. <laughs> oh look, we almost forgot, Mr. Loomis has been here the whole time. Looks like he heard everything we were saying. Speaking of which, what are you planning to do with this, with this fellow? Hmm. Perhaps we could throw him back in prison. Oh ho oh, oh. ho, what's the matter, my dear Vincent? What's the embarrassed look on your face? Victor, that's enough. By the way, I actually got a surprise for you. These? Some items are brought back from Winston's lab. I secretly broke open one of the drawers there, there when no one was around. It was Victor who went to the drawer! <coughs> In other words, you've known this the whole time that Winston's escape from prison was my work. From my work? Well, you could say so. Edgeworth? Why don't you take a moment? moment and look through these. As for Mr. Loomis, like, just leave him from me, to me for a moment. What's he gonna do to Huh? Wait. Wait, the diary! Green Triangle. Victor Blake. He intimidates me sometimes. 
you could read my mind without any difficulty. It could even go as far as to anticipate my every move. He never needed Maya's mechanical prosthetics to be superhuman. He's already he already is one. Sometimes I can't help but wonder if I hadn't become friends with him back in college, if I had never had had him next to me when when I needed him. How different would things be? Where would I possibly be at this moment? I'd rather not think about it. Wait. Time is running out. I need to carefully examine these items Victor brought back. Oh, I'm playing as Vincent now! Okay, um, let's look at these cards first. Poker cards. Four of Fire, Ace of Forest, Two of Drop, and Three of Crescent? The poker cards in the G4 District are built different from the more prevalent versions. The more prevalent versions originated from the G3 District. There were four suits, spades, hearts, clubs, and diamonds. On the other hand, the G4 has a na nature theme with four suits replaced by fire, trees, water droplets, and the moon. There have been many theories as to why this is, but there is still no definitive answer. However, this is quite ironic in my opinion, because the culture and purpose of G4 has nothing to do with nature at all. And more importantly, why would Wits and Lumis bring a deck of cards to Maya's corporation, and specifically these four? Wait a second. G3 has a club, spades, hearts, and diamonds, right? Ugh, ugh, hell yeah. Maybe... Maybe this is the pattern we're looking for, but like, not what we... I don't know. Every employee should know that this is strictly forbidden to carry non-work related items, let alone playing cards. What's even stranger is, these four cards happen to contain all four suits, and the number that- and the number just happened to be from ace to four as well. Oh! So it's like- so ace is like one in cards, like four, one, two, three? I feel like I have to remember that. Okay, hold on, let me actually type that in my notes real quick. Or one, two, three. Or it could be three, two, one, four. I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll think of it as just four, one, two, three. Obviously, this is some kind of hint that Winston was giving himself. It is some kind of code. Hmm. A foundation, a fountain pen. The whole surface barrel is smooth, but on one side has a square engraved on it, which seems to be quite out of place. Wait, so blue squ So wait, back in the earlier room, it's like yellow diamond, so like... <coughs> so yellow diamond... Blue square. A little notebook. The covering is great with a triangle. Every page in the book is full of details and the daily experiments is in neat handwriting. So, like, green equals triangle? Which leaves red for circle. Right? Okay, that should... That might be it. There's no doubt that this is Winston's research journal. February 15, 2080. Sunny. Such identified exhibited very severe rejection accompanied by significant mental, mental decline. The subject exhibited multiple symptoms of discomfort, excluding convulsion, including convulsions, screaming, and banging on the containment unit. Subjects number one and three are currently stable and have not exhibited any signs of rejection. 
April 10th, 2080, Sunny. Sunny Thunderfly's mental condition deteriorated further, and, and a portion of the epi epidermis on the torso showed signs of decay. The subject made several attempts to destroy the containment unit and still showed si no signs of improvement after food intake. Subjects number one and number three are currently in stable condition with no rejection observed at this time. July 1st, 2080, cloudy. Subject number 5's physical condition is deteriorated to the point where only 30% of its body surface still has skin. If the subject continues to fail to demonstrate successful me mechani mechaniz mechanization, we will remove its memory core. Subject number 3 is otherwise in good condition, but with an abnormal refusal to take food today. Subject number 1 is currently in a stable condition, with no rejection observed at this time. December 20th, 2080, rainy. Subject number 5's memory core has been successfully dismantled, and the subject is temporarily sealed in the containment unit. We will dismember it at a later date and dispose of its body parts in the wet in the wastewater pool outside of the G4 district. Subjects 1 and 3 are are currently in stable condition and no rejection is observed. January 12, 2081, sunny. Today, subject number 1 has become unstable and violent and attempted to attack several researchers. The, su the subject stabilized after the removal of the memory core and is now temporarily sealed in its containment unit. Subject 3 remains stable at this time but yet has but has yet to show any evidence of successful psychic linking. What? Hmm. Memory core, is it? Huh. Especially mixed martini. It has become more than just mere pleasure of taste for me. It is now necess a necessity of life. Okay, let's check the boombox then. A boombox Victor brought, brought in. I don't know what he was thinking. However, the news of Winston's escape is now widespread to the G4 district. This is not what I desired, but unfortunately it is inevitable. Ooh! Whoa. I'm back in the room! Was that Vincent's memory that I just saw? <clears throat> hey, hey, are you all right? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm fine. Come to think of it, I don't think she knows I have the ability to read memories yet. Jesus Christ, you scared the crap out of me! You suddenly went ex emo expressionless and weren't moving an inch. You didn't even respond to me. Sorry, sorry that I made you worry. I feel much better now. By the way, you seem to have worked out what the news recorded in the tape was about. Oh, really? Oh, really? Let's hear it. What is it about? It's about Winston Loomis escaping from prison. That one innocent employee who was framed by Myers. Oh, I remember that. <clears throat> from what I've heard, no one knows where the guy is to this day. But detective, you have to watch out. I wouldn't have called him innocent if I were you. <clears throat> Why do you say so? It isn't it true that most of the rules describe him as an innocent employee who was framed by Myers Corporation? And I guess they're right to some extent. The experiments on the cyborgs were not the work of Winston alone. In fact, every core member of Myers Corporation was aware of the existence of the project. But together, they chose to frame that poor researcher who, so as not to implicate themselves. However, what many people have forget to mention is, Winston was indeed one of the researchers involved in the experiment. Speaking of which, Detective, you want to know a fun fact? Winston actually used to work right here in this lab. <clears throat> I see. So Winston wasn't innocent after all. However, we, he was framed by the other members of Myers Corporation and took the blame for the whole experiment. And on July 2081, he, he managed to escape from prison with Winston's help. Vincent mentioned that he needed Winston's help, uh, Winston's knowledge, but also Vic just helped to master certain technology. On one hand, he wanted to use the technology to protect himself, and on the other, he wanted to seek his revenge on Myers. 
as to what kind of technology that is, I can I can make a good guess, but I still need to confirm my suspicion. In any case, let's continue the investigation. I could probably use a scalpel on something, right? Can I use it on here? Can't use it on here. Okay. So, okay, so, warning, this device will unlock automatically after entering the correct answer. Okay, so, okay, wait, 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 let me look at the door real quick. So it's green, red, blue, yellow. So green triangle, red circle, um, blue square, yellow diamond? No, it has to be in a specific order. Wait, maybe it's the opposite. Yellow diamond. Blue square. Green triangle. Red circle? No. Wait a second. Four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. So it should be the last one first. The usual thing is spade, heart, club, and diamond. <coughs> so that means that diamond should be last, right? So yellow diamond should be last. Maybe green triangle, blue square, red circle? No. something about one of these robotic arms again because this one was holding a key hey did you notice huh something is different about this robotic arm gotta take a closer look you see this this one has this extra circle engraved on it hmm you're right that's just a small detail does it really mean anything it means a lot. Huh? 
why don't you find it find it for me then? As far as I know, only from the front desk can control can control gates on the other either side of the lobby. It's a feature of the Myers security system. With all due respect, the security system doesn't make much sense to me. I know, right? I have no clue what they, they were thinking either. Right now, the only possible way for us to get out of here is to reach the other side of Myers and take the elevator from the base basement and then go back to the lobby from there. I see. Then it seems my assumptions aren't wrong. So, yeah, so it's like... So I knew it. It's like red cir So red circle... Green triangle, blue square, yellow diamond. Try re I'm gonna try reordering these. So let's put the green triangle here. Uh, blue square. Yellow diamond and, and then red circle? Maybe that's it? Yes! Oh, it worked! Oh, I am the smartest man alive. I can't believe it, you're incredible! That means this door unlocked, yes! Whew. The room behind the door was much darker. My eyes had a hard time adjusting, but to sudden darkness. What was that? I just stepped on some kind of wet, sticky something. Oh no, is it blood? I bent down and tried to reach for it, but my arm was nicked by something sharp. Ouch! Are these shards of glass? That was w when I suddenly realized that we were in a huge glass chamber standing in front of me. And inside it was- Oh! Hi! Get back! Get back! <laughs> Are these the test subjects? The diary was talking about, maybe? Thank god. It looks like that thing is dead. Look there. Someone's in there. Huh? Someone's in the glass chamber in the middle. Oh! That's probably a cy just a cyborg, too. <coughs> a cyborg? But they look like as if they are... Detective, didn't you know? There are many kinds of cyborgs. Many kinds? What do you mean? I'm not really an expert myself, but let me just read this part out for you. With that, Zalmeda took out a journal from her pocket. Ooh. Due to different bodies' varying ability to withstand semi-mechanicalization, the phenomenon of intellectual polarization often appears in each batch of experimental subjects. Subjects so are able to able to withstand me mechaniz mechanization, mechanization generally retain human facial features and with very and with their newly modified bodies they exhibit superhuman abilities superior to those of ordinary humans <coughs> on the other hand subjects that fail to su successfully withstand mechanization exhibit a severe intellectual de degradation thus making them behave like wild beasts at the same time, the bodies of these failed subjects would exhibit an obvious rejection of the mechanization, resulting in them giving the impression that they were falling apart. We refer to these cyborgs that have lost their intelligence known as husks. It was worth noting, however, that some of the experimental subjects seem to require an acc acclimation period. That is, their bodies exhibit repulsion similar to that of a husk when they first undergo mechanization. But as long as they are fed regularly and are given ample time, eventually their bodies will be able to successfully accept the modifications they are given. Thus, after a batch of experimental subjects have been modified, 
we tend to leave them in a secret chamber for a period of, observ of observation. If after that time the subject still does not demonstrate signs of successful mechanization, we would we would then dismember it and dump its body parts into the wastewater pool outside of G4 district. That's that's what Loomis was doing with the other scientists, with the other researchers. The above was recorded in an experiment journal I found here in this corporation. In other words, there are two kinds of cyborgs. The first kind looks like a monster because its body could not, could not withstand the mechanization. And the other is able to re retain its intelligence and look exactly like a normal person because it's been successfully transformed? Yes, but not only that. Pay attention to the next part. Since often only small number of subjects possess the ability to withstand mechanization, we often have to dismember to discard most of the cyborgs in the chamber. And this is definitely very costly and burdensome for us. Therefore, thanks to tireless efforts and several researchers, we have successfully developed a method to create new types of cyborgs through genetic cloning technology. So they were cloning people down here? As a result, we no longer need to search for that minority that can withstand mechanization in batch after, in batch, after batch of experimental subjects. All we need to do is to extract the, the genes in, of the subject and have been successfully modified and we can produce them again. Nonetheless, since these new cyborgs do not possess any memory, we need to install the memory cord inside them, giving them memories that do not exist, thus giving them a unique personality. Wait, I just put two and two together. Is Leia one of these experimented cyborgs? No way, cause, cause think about it, at the beginning of the game, when we wake up, when we wake up, we have no memories. So does that mean we're a husk? Dude, this game is mind-blowing. These memories can be extracted from the, from anything exist <clears throat> any existing employee to achieve the desired personality. In other words, there are cyborgs that are not directly modified from human beings, but are created through genetic cloning technology. But it's hard to tell them apart just by looking at them. You mean... It is possible that there are cyborgs looking around that just look like us ordinary humans? Yes, in a manner of speaking. Oh no, it's another code. A glass chamber. In the same as someone looks just like a human being. This gives me the creeps. Cyborg. Thank goodness it's dead. Hmm. <clears throat> a blackboard. There's a lot of diagrams and text mark on it. Number one. Zero zero one. Zero one zero one one one. Oh, I feel like I have to remember this. Okay, so... So one is... Is zero zero one. Two is zero what zero and seven is one one one. Takes you see a string of numbers in the upper right corner? One equals zero zero one, two equals zero one zero, and seven equals one one one. Is this decimal and binary conversion? <clears throat> Correct. The binary num Numeral system is widely used in computing technology and represents numbers with just two symbols, 0 and 1. 
For example, the binary 110 means 0 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 2, which is 6 in decimal. And 111 means 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 times 2, which is 7. 7 in decimal. So it's like 4 plus 2 plus 1. Oh! I'm actually learning a little bit of binary from this. If, if that's how binary works, then it's probably a lot more simple than I thought it was. See, in other words, we need to find a corresponding experimental subject number in the binary. So if I remember the journal right, subject 5 was discarded. So it's like 5 something something. Do I need to figure out the binary five? Wait a second. So zero one zero is one plus one times two. Okay, I, f I feel like I actually need to look up binary. Hold up. A binary to decimal. <coughs> <coughs> but but the real ver but the real light version uses four numbers. This one uses three. Oh wait a second, maybe it just means the three numbers and not the first one. So so five is one zero one. One zero one. System error. The containment unit for subject five is empty. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. <clears throat> so this. So this would tell us something about the subjects. So all the subjects are odd numbers. So like five. So five is empty. So you have one and three. So let's go with zero, zero, one. This doesn't matter. The container subject number one has been damaged. So three, okay, okay, look at this. So it would be zero, one, one. Approved, command received. Draining the containment unit of subject number three. Uh-oh. I feel like something bad's gonna happen. I'm going to save here, just in case something happens. <laughs> and now we can get a better look. What? <coughs> Wait a second, what? Is that a woman? The already stifling atmosphere intensifies as we caught the first glimpse of what was inside the glass chamber. Zamora was horrified at first, but her expression quickly changed to worry. But it was as if we had mutually agreed not to say anything to each other beforehand. Is this what I look like? Is this- am I a clone of this thing? Maybe- maybe that's why they're shocked. Maybe that's why they're shocked. I'm just- I'm just taking a wild guess. I can sense someone was staring straight at me. But at that moment, I was completely focused on the cyborg in front of me. Let's do this then. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, do I have to use- uh, Is this where I use the scalpel? I took the scalpel that Zomona handed to me and started making deep cuts into the cyborg's body. Ugh! Again and again and again. I felt emotions I had never felt before welling up inside me. But all Zomona did was just stare. She didn't utter a word. <clears throat> before I realized the cyborg's chest was shredded to pieces. I revealed been Beneath the skin was a particular spherical device. Oh, is that the thing? I got the sphere with my bare hand and pulled it out. This is what you wanted, right? The cyborg's memory core? Yes. What if it's my memories? I handed it to Zomono my blood-soaked hand. 
Let's get the hell out of here. I can't stand it in here anymore. Detective, are you all right? Detective, stop calling me detective. You don't even know who I am. You saw it too. That cyborg we just saw. She looked exactly like me. I don't even know who you are, Zomona. I don't remember anything at all. I thought coming here would find would find me the answer that I wanted, but now I just feel completely lost. I could be someone who doesn't even exist. Just one of a million other identical cyborgs. Draco was right all along. I shouldn't even be here to begin with. Even with my sudden breakdown, Zomona didn't show one ounce of anger with me. After a moment of silence, she started to speak. You feel that the truth you seek is meaningless now, don't you? You lost all hope because you're worried that you were merely a replica. But you shouldn't let your past define you. You're right. There's no way to be certain if you are or aren't the detective I met. But whoever, but whoever each of us is, is up to us. The moment you open your eyes, you are who you are, and not anyone else. I'm sorry, I, I can't speak in this voice anymore. I can't do Zamona's voice anymore, it hurts my throat. <clears throat> so what if there is someone else, somewhere in the world, who looks exactly like you? <clears throat> it's each of our own unique experiences that make up who we are, isn't it? At this moment, only you and I are standing here. This experiment just belongs to us. And no one else. What motivates each of us to go with our own life? On with our lives is the countless exciting possibilities that lie in store. And in the near future, you are bound to meet new people and make new friends. And maybe they will become your new family. People who are willing to sacrifice their lives for you. People who would sacrifice their lives for me? <clears throat> Zomona's words were somehow very reassuring. It was very different from how I had imagined her to be. I never would have thought to, I would hear such words from you. <laughs> Probably something I picked up during my previous profession. Huh? Don't worry too much about it. It's irrelevant now. Anyway, thanks a lot for your help. You have no idea how important this device is to me. Zamona, why did you need the cyborg's memory core? It's a long story. You said you've lost all your memories. But seeing that you've found your way to Myers, I think it's safe to assume that you've heard about the urban legends of, about the G4 district. G4 district's urban legend? You mean the infamous G4 cyborg incident? Close. But I'm thinking particularly about the end of that legend. It should sound something like this. To this day, people still mysteriously vanish in the G4 district. Rumors say that the spirits of the victims from the experiment are still wandering the streets to taking the lives of those unfortunate enough to cross paths with them. I remember. Right. And you don't need me to tell you that ghosts don't exist. The, these recent disappearances in the G4 district are are the deliberate work of a certain someone as well. Are you suggesting Myers Corporation is behind these recent disappearances as well? The Myers Corporation has continuing operations covertly? Yeah, something like that. <clears throat> but here's the thing. A lot of details about these cases are different from the original G4 Cyborg incident. In the G4 Cyborg incident, Myers Corporation turned their own employees into cyborgs and kidnapped ordinary citizens to use as cattle feed. But most of the people who go missing nowadays aren't ordinary citizens. It's people who either had a history with Myers or who were former employees of Myers. Did Myers Corporation turn them into cyborgs as well? Or were they just used as cattle feed? Mm -hmm. They were all once somehow once associated with Myers. It makes sense that Myers would simply want them gone. Precisely. But many people believe that this is... The that this series of disappearances is the work of just one person. A dangerous criminal who is extremely careful, so much so that they've never left a single fingerprint behind, 
or a clue as to what really happened to the victims. <coughs> that person is known as the most wanted criminal in the G4 district. As for how they connected to Myers, no one is really sure, but there is just one person who has seen them that is still alive. Only one person? Who is that? That person is me. Is it Mona? Yes, the most wanted criminal in the G4 district messed up once, and I was there when it happened. Oh, it was a dark and windy night. I had just gotten back to my apartment building and was ab about to go inside my apartment to relax. Ooh? But when I was walking past the apartment on the same floor, the power went out. <coughs> the hallway was enveloped in complete darkness and I couldn't see anything around me. Just then, I heard a blood curling screams accompanied with what sounded like flesh being torn off the bone from the apartment next to me. The person rushed out of the apartment and brushed past me. It was such a pan they were in such a panic that I wasn't even sure if they noticed my presence. Shortly afterwards, the power came back on, but that person was long gone. The hallway had been spotless beforehand. It was completely different from after the power was restored. The walls and floor were painted red with blood, and the apartment's door, which was previously closed, was half ajar. Holy shit, this is serious! Without thinking much, I pushed open the door of the, the apartment to check on my neighbor. And what I saw before me was the most horrible thing I've seen in my ever, ever seen in my life. Oh God! Sorry, I'm taking screenshots of this, but my God! A man on the floor was as his body shred to bits. The room was strewn with pieces of his body and entrails. But that wasn't even the worst part. The scariest thing was enough of his head was completely detached from his body, and his mouth was still opening and closing as if it were desperately trying to catch his breath. Hey, hey, hang in there. <clears throat> I'll call an ambulance right away. <clears throat> I impulsively rushed him, rushed to help him, even though I knew very well that it, that it was much too late. Just then, some of the neighbors had heard the scream and rushed over. My attempts to help the victim were misunderstood. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Murderer! She's a murderer! Grab her! Don't let her get away! Wait! Wait! I can explain! But it was too late for me to say anything. <clears throat> and then, what happened after that? After that, as embarrassing as it sounds, I became G4's most wanted criminal. Although I have managed to escape from G4 police, it's getting so much harder to find a new apartment these days. But please believe me. I really wasn't the one who killed them. I wouldn't even hurt a fly. I believe you, Zamona. But then, you didn't actually get a good look at him either? <sighs> You're right. The corridor was completely dark when I met him. I didn't get to see what he looked like either. If that's the case, how can you be so sure that the killer is the same person who was responsible for the recent series of disappearances in G4? Honestly, I can't. But I learned later that the victim was my neighbor, Dr. Richard Eminem. Why is there- why is Richard always the bad guy in these horror games? <clears throat> A former employee of Myers. And, as always, the police found no fingerprints from any suspects at the scene. Of course. Of course, except for mine. That's too- that's too much of a coincidence, don't you think? So my guess is, the killer was originally going to kidnap Dr. Em Emanon and, mur and murder him somewhere else. Actually, no, wait, the bad guy isn't Richard. Oh wait, well, was Richard the one that got killed? But for some reason, he screwed up all the time. So he killed Dr. Emanon in, in a hurry and ran away. And what's even more interesting is, the way Dr. Eminem was murdered was very similar to how the core me members were killed in the G4 Cyborg incident. They're all ripped to pieces. So it's quite possible that 
that this is the same person who got away with the killing in the court with killing the core members then the reason you were looking for cyborg's memory core is yes as i was saying many of the victims of the recent unexplained disappearances have s some connection to myers it's hard to conclude with that the murderer is also a very close relationship with myers to each of the cyborgs that myers produces th through cloning will have a memory core each device stores certain memories, giving the cyborgs the personalities they would lack otherwise. Most of these memories are extracted from Myers employees. I understand. I understand now. You want to find the real murderer by re by reading the memories of each memory core, thus proving your innocence. Exactly. Not just for my own sake, but also for the safety of the G4 district. I was. I will keep searching until I find out the truth. And even if it's Myers Corporation who, who's behind all this. Hmm. All right, that's all I have to say. Anyway, thanks again for helping me out. Go ahead and take this key card. I took the key card to the legal department that Zamona was that Zamona handed me. But you are still going to continue your investigation, you know. If you want to get out of here right now, we could... No, that wouldn't be possible. Impossible. Huh? But isn't the gate to the lobby closed? I know, I know, but the truth is, I accidentally forgot about this. The mother took a watch out of her pocket. Um, a watch? Oh, darling, this, this watch is more than meets the eye. It was originally a gift from my old friend of mine, but I have made a few modifications to it. Just by wearing it, I can teleport myself anywhere. Then why didn't you teleport out? How did you forget something this important? I know, right, Leia? Right? But the downside is... It can teleport me anywhere. What do you mean? As in... I can't decide where I'll be- where we'll be teleported to. <laughs> Really? This is your technology. Why can't you control it? <laughs> That's just too funny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Someone is just incompetent, but I love it. It's like, it's like, oh, I made the teleportation watch, but I can't control where I teleport. That's just too funny. <laughs> That's just too funny. I was once teleported into the men's bathhouse. Incredibly embarrassing situation. But hey, there's risks with any. There's risks with anything, wouldn't you agree? So, are you gonna come with me? Let's get the hell out of here. <clears throat> oh, I feel like I have to make a decision here. Okay, let me just save. I'm sorry, Zamona. I can't leave just yet. There's this person that, even though I can't remember how we're connected or why, he was willing to he was willing to risk his life for me. And that person is currently trapped in Myers' lobby. I'm worried about him. I see. Do you want me to come with you? No, Zamona. That would be too dangerous. <clears throat> this is all my fault. I should never have come here. I can't get another one of my friends involved. I don't want to see them get hurt. I understand. If that's the case, promise me that you'll take care of yourself. I hope we can meet again someday. Maybe then you'll be able to tell me your real name. <clears throat> I'll see you later, miss. When you get back your memory when you get your memories back, be sure to tell me all the stories about your past, alright? Of course. Goodbye, Zomona. Oh, and she's gone. I wonder where she will be teleported this time. <laughs> she is just, just teleported on top of a building like, oh shit, how do I get down now? <laughs> also, Zamona's design really reminded me of uh, Alistair. You know, from uh, from Hasbin Hotel, Radio Demon, that guy. The, the, the design kind of reminded me of him a lot. <clears throat> well then, it is time for me to push forward as well.
Next up, the legal department. Ooh. Investigation complete. Successfully located Cyborg's memory core. Here we are, <clears throat> the legal department. I don't believe that Vincent used to work here. Wait a second. In the distance, is that an elevator? <clears throat> so Mona had told me the only way to get back to Myers' lobby now is to take the elevator to the basement and then return there from, from the other side. So it seems that this is what she was talking about. <clears throat> However, I've come a long way. Shouldn't I investigate this place first? But... What's the point? I have now long lost confidence that I had, I had when I was confronting Draco in the Myers lobby. I'm not sure if I want to know the truth anymore. You have to realize losing your memories could also be a blessing. Countless people are imprisoned by their own memories. They try their best to let go, yet cling to them at the same time. But you, on the other hand, are given a second chance. <clears throat> Isn't that wonderful? I'll be honest, even I'm getting a little bit jealous. How could you end up here, Leia? I Leia, I regret to inform you that I don't know either. The truth is, my butler was the one who heard, heard peculiar knocking sounds on the door last night. And when it opened, and when he went to open it, he, he saw you face down on the stairs, unconscious. Your seemingly commendable courage is nothing more than ignorance wrapped up in a pretty package. You, ha you have absolutely no clue what you are about to face. Do you really believe that you can face the total dangers that are coming your way? Do you really believe you can accept the truth that will be revealed? Vincent, Victor, Drake, and Draco. How many lies are, are there all around me? Why is it like that? Why is everyone lying to me? Ever since I woke up in this mansion, I have been deceived again and again. Why? Why are you all lying to me? What am I doing? I don't have time to think about that right now. Since I am already here, I might as well take a look around first. I started to briefly read through some of the documents I found. Uh, these documents are from the legal department. I don't really understand them all. I don't really understand them at all. Hold on a second. The name plate on this table. Vincent Edgeworth, Chief Legal and Officer. So then, this used to be... Vincent's office table? On the table was a note and a glove. The note looked brand new and therefore seemed out of place compared to the rest of the files here. Someone could have just recently left it here. Was Zomona the one who put it here? Oh! Oh, that's my hand. That's so weird. I picked up the note on the desk. Dear my lovely Leia, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm just joking. Of course I know you're not doing well because you've lost all your memories. So, do you want to get all your memories back? I know you do. In that case, I have left for you a small gift. I'm sure it will help a lot in getting back what you want. An old friend who wishes to remain anonymous. Gotta be Vincent or Draco. A gift for me? Must be referring to the glove next to it. For some reason, I was blasted with a wave of anxiety. Objective, put on the glove. <clears throat> Should I put on the glove? Okay, I'm gonna save here. Yes. <clears throat> the glove fits my hand perfectly. Oh? Huh? Whoa, 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 what? 
Do you remember who you are? All hail Mars, all hail Mars, all hail Mars. Wait, what? Do you still remember your purpose? All hail Myers? We all miss you so much. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hurry up and come back home. Oh, hey, hello. Welcome to Myers Corporation. <coughs> How's it feel to be alive? Pretty good, huh? I know you're still a little confused right now, but it's okay. I assure you that you will soon get used to it. Oh, you're asking me what your mission is? <clears throat> My dear, patience. We'll get to that. Where should I start? Oh, you know, I have this old friend who is a little mad at me. A little mad that he would wants to murder me and destroy my company. So he has made a weapon, a very deadly weapon. We don't know what that weapon is, but a little bird he told me it has something to do with other people's memories. Ah, pretty frightening, right? So here's what you need to do. Oh, oh, my apologies. I hope this is about my delivery. Hello? Oh, already? That's awesome. But unfortunately, I am not at home right now, my friend. Yes, just leave the package at the door. Yes, the entire uniform. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Where was I again? That's right. I need you to locate this weapon and then destroy it. While you're at it, try to figure out what kind of experiment this guy is up to. Your codename will be... Whoa! A sudden, tremendous shudder from legal department snapping back to reality. What just happened? Whoa! Suddenly, a man flew through the wall connecting laboratory and legal department as if thrown by something with full force. He was slammed to the wall of the other end of the department and then fell to the floor. Is that Dr Draco? But because of the massive impact, Draco had lost his consciousness. Uh-oh. Oh, am I gonna face the beast? <clears throat> what followed was an inhuman roar from the lab. I could hear the monsters approaching steps. Okay, let me save, let me save, let me save, let me save, let me save. Draco! Draco! I shook Draco violently, but he didn't respond. Draco, wake up! Damn it! What should I do? The basement! Quick! I dashed the elevator and punched the button. Hurry, please be quick. I hurried and dragged Draco into the elevator, then pressed the button to close the door. Oh, God. I can still feel my heart pounding. That monster didn't seem to be pursuing us. I think we're safe for now. What exactly was that thing? Leia. Draco? Oh, he took a big beating. I'm sorry, Leia. I couldn't stop him. Slowly, Draco stood up. <coughs> he sounded very weak. Draco, are you okay? No need to worry about me. It's just a few scratches. Stop acting like a hero at, at a time like this! Draco froze in, in the face of my emotional outburst. At that moment, we both just... We were both just looking at each other and stuck in silence. Draco, are you serious? Stop with the act! You have... You've been saying... You've been saying strange, incomprehensible bullshit ever since we met in the lobby. You're badly hurt, yet you're making light of it. You're really starting to piss me off. I don't give a damn about how cool you are. And at this point, I really don't care how many lies you've told me. But I do know that I am worried about you. What I'm worried about now is you. You reminded me of that time. Draco's face broke 
and began to show a deep sorrow, a sadness that I would never expect to see from him. <clears throat> that time? Leia, I'm sorry. If only I had told you the truth earlier, maybe things wouldn't be the way they are. Draco, there are times, there are times when I ask myself, what can we go back in time? But for you, our past is long gone. We can, we can go back. We will. That's what we're here for, isn't it? To search for our past. The past we shared. Even if I've completely forgotten you, I'd like to get to know you again. So we can ex so we can escape from here. Please tell me everything about your past. As you wish, Lady Leia. But there is one more but there is more urgent issue at hand. Where is he right now? What happened there? What the hell is that thing? He's not a thing. He's someone you already know. The truth is... Uh oh. Oh Jesus! Venora! Venora? Who's Venora? My precious chaser, tell me, is there someone you love? A loved one? My dear Monsieur M, why would you ask such a question? Let's assume one day a disaster were to happen to your loved one. Say they lose their body, but their memories are still intact. Would you still love them like that? Of course I would. No matter w what body they change to, they're still them. What a heartwarming answer. Well, let's change the scenario, shall we? Let's say, what if the person you love is physically intact, but has lost all their memories? Would you s Would you still love such a person? Of course I would. Even if they lose all their memories, I would still love them. Even if they completely forgot about your existence? Even if all the memories you two shared are gone. This would make me miserable, but I would still love them. What an amusing answer. Humans always have been able to entertain me. Well then, since you don't mind them losing their body, you don't mind them losing their memory. What exactly do you love about them? What do you love? What you love is merely a self-fulfilling illusion. What you love is a person from your past that no longer exists. The brutal truth is, the moment one loses their memory, they will no longer be themselves, and they will never be able to go back. Investigation complete. Successfully retrieve the glove. Ooh. Crime scene, do not cross. <coughs> Are you the new detective? Good to see you here. Just call me Venora. <coughs> Where is the crime scene? I heard the victim was a former employee of Myers. Yes, room 309. Come with me. Move along, people. Nothing to see here. And stop interfering with the work of the police officers. Right, here we are. Whoa. I'll leave the rest to you, Venora. Objective, survey the crime scene. Okay, so I guess we're playing as someone named Venora? Uh, let's look around. Um, this looks important. Isn't this a trophy from before? A trophy, a stain of blood. <coughs> looks like it was used as a weapon of some kind. 
Do we find fingerprints from any suspects in the trophy? No. We only managed to collect Dr. Em Eminence. Click the events. Bloodstained trophy. <coughs> A bloodstained chair. Nothing special about it. Bloodstained cabinet. Nothing special about it. Bodies are already been cleared. The G4 investigation bureau is sure is efficient. That's correct. As the victim has been dismembered, we were unable to outline the exact location of the body on the floor. However, <clears throat> the autopsy report from the investigation bureau has been released. The cause of death was due to rapid dismemberment of the body in a short period of time. So you're saying the murderer dismembered the victim while he was still alive? Yes, it was very gruesome death. But according to our autopsy report, the victim's head <clears throat> had did show signs of being struck by an object, but it was not fatal. <laughs> In addition, the body displayed signs of struggle before de death, so it's unlikely that he was unconscious for the ordeal. Struck by an object? Is it the trophy on the floor? Correct. <clears throat> the shape of the wound does correspond to the pointed corner of the trophy. <clears throat> Besides that, there is something else that's strange. Some of the dismembered body parts have, of the deceased have disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. <clears throat> we couldn't fully reconstruct the victim's body with the pieces left in the room. We searched for the entire apartment building, but we couldn't find any of the missing body parts. We did take into consideration that the perpetrator could be non-human. But the report has made it clear that this dismemberment is, is not a result of a beast attack. Click the evidence. Disappearing body parts. <clears throat> I opened the curtain. <clears throat> it's only the window of this apartment. The lock appears to not be tampered with, so it's unlikely that the murderer entered the room through here. Was the curtain here closed before? Yes, of course. We haven't moved a thing. Collected evidence. Closed curtains. Um, things hanging in the wall, but close. But closer to look, the more obvious it is that they're just printouts. Um, let's talk. Is there anything I can assist with? With Detective Venora. Um, ask about the facts of the case. According to our con conversation, conversations with the residents of this building, there was a short power outage in the building around when the crime was occurring. However, after the, our investigation, it seems that the building's blackout was not the murder's work. It was a mere coincidence. So the victim was killed in the exact time of a power outage. Correct. Collected evidence, a brief blackout of the building. Ask for information about the victim. <clears throat> the name of the victim is Dr. Richard Eminen, a former researcher of Myers Corporation. According to our investigation, although the victim holds a PhD, his position at Myers is rather unremarkable. We don't know much about his current occupation, but judging from the, ap from the apartment, it's not hard to deduce that, they, that, they pay the, that the pay wasn't getting any better. A resident on the same floor claimed to have seen him in the hallway outside the apartment, the apartment last night. Allegedly, Dr. Eminem was on the phone at the time, at the time, and seemed to be talking about some sort of deal. A deal. Dr. Eminem's deal. Door. The door of the apartment. The residents of the apartment in the building claimed that the murderer eluded them and escaped through here. The suspect's name was Zelmona, a resident on this floor. Something worth mentioning is, she is a mutant. What? She's a mutant? I thought she was another cyborg. It was like the eyes, you know? She didn't look like a mutant. A mutant? Is she from G3? We're unsure at this moment. Countless tourists visit G3 district every year to receive modifications. We can't draw any conclusions yet. We thoroughly searched her apartment, but strangely enough, we couldn't find any form of identification. 
<clears throat> For now, it seems that the murderer has escaped. What about bloodstains in the hallway outside the apartment? Before we arrived, Dr. Eminence screams attracted a lot of curious residents. These guys trampled over the entire apartment building. And, and now there's blood everywhere outside the apartment. <clears throat> Even if there were any useful clues in the hallway, they've probably trampled them to oblivion by now. Quick evidence. The suspect. Uh, finish investigation. Investigation completed. I believe we get her enough information to, pro to, postulate, to postulate at what may have happened. It's clear that the murderer was predetermined. The perpetrator was planning to kill, kill Dr. Edmund from the, at the very beginning. And since the window lacked any signs of fourth entry, it's most possible that the culprit entered the apartment directly through the door. That means the murderer was invited to the apartment by Dr. Eminent himself. In other words, the murderer was most likely whoever Dr. Eminent was making this deal with. Nonetheless, in the midst of all this, a small mishap occurred. The killer intended to kill Dr. Eminent directly by hitting him on the head with the trophy. But, but the sudden power failure in the apartment made him miss, and he f failed to kill Dr. Eminent in a single blow. Which is understandable. No one could anticipate a freak blackout. However, if the killer, the same person that's behind the other recent G4 disappearances, then their negligence cannot be attributed to just that. <clears throat> the other victims who went missing disappeared without a trace, as if they had vanished into thin air. But this time, the murderer messed up a whole apartment and attracted the attention of other residents. If it's really the same perpetrator, there has to be something else that, that also contributed to such a major mistake. In fact, the murderer could very well be very handsome. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That is too funny. He'd be seriously injured, have been reluctant to kill Dr. Eminem, have an extreme fear of the dark. Um, hmm. Um, hmm. Um, the murderer wanted to kill Dr. Vince, so I don't think he was reluctant. Maybe he had an extreme fear of the dark? I'm only taking a wild guess here, I don't know. Correct! Okay, that was right. The murderer might have had an extreme fear of the dark. And curtains in the apartment were drawn closed at the time. It would have taken a while for human eyes to adjust to sudden darkness. So in the moment of the blackout, Dr. Eminent's apartment was most likely pitch black. A cold-blooded assassin, who usually manages to keep so calm and careful, completely lost control in, his, in this apartment. It's quite possible that the killer was in extreme fear of sudden darkness darkness due to some form of previous trauma. Sudden darkness. I see. I think I understand now. In addition, the manner of Dr. Eminent's death is major mystery. <clears throat> the killer dismembered him alive after failing to kill him with a single blow. The way they dismembered him reminds me of how the core members of Myers Corporation were killed. As far as I know, all the core members of Myers were, were killed in a similarly bl brutal way. Add that to the recent disappearance of the G4 district, leaving many citizens paranoid. I guess many people would think that the killer is the same person who killed all the core members. <clears throat> However, I believe that the real reason why the killer tore Dr. Eminent to pieces was... Oh... Wait, but they said they couldn't reform his body with the pieces they had. So, maybe to collect certain body parts? Correct! Okay! Some of Dr. M Eminent's body parts have gone missing. I don't remember that, that happening to any of the core members. 
The real reason why the killer dismembered Dr. Eminent is in a panic was to obtain his body parts. The G4 Cyborg incident, Myers Corporation was found to be the, when using human flesh to, of ordinary G4 citizens to feed their cyborgs. <clears throat> but si since Dr. Eminent's body did not, not have any sign of a beast attack, the killer was most likely trying to obtain Dr. Eminent's body parts to use to feed the cyborgs at, at a later time. But if they were working for Myers, wouldn't it be more likely that they would want to make a cyborg out of Dr. Eminem? Why would they choose a tournament to cyborg feed instead? Detective Venora? Yes? <clears throat> Have you reached any conclusion who the killer is? Put out a warrant for the arrest of Zalmona. She is, she is undoubtedly the perpetrator we, we've been trying to search for all along. As you wish, Detective Venora. But it wasn't, well, but it wasn't Zamora, was it? It couldn't be. I mean, Zamora does, did make a deal before, but I don't, the warrant has been issued. But Detective Nora, would you mind coming outside with me for a moment? There's some important matters I'd like to discuss with you. I followed him to the street outside the apartment. It was getting quite late and the temperature had dropped quite dramatically. But he was just walking in front of me silently, as if the cold weather did not bother him. After a while, he finally stopped in an alley where there was no one nearby. What was it that you wanted to discuss? I decided to speak first. Well then, let's hear it. Who's the actual killer? <clears throat> Excuse me? You called the inspector, yet you don't even realize who I, who I am this whole time. The man, the man in the front slowly took off his police hat and that what followed was a sight that I couldn't have expected. What? Wait, who is that? He suddenly grabbed the corner of his cheek and tore skin off his head. What was revealed beneath was blue skin and white hair. It's you! But him revealing his true form only made me more vigilant. Inspector, it appears the fact that you still see me as a threat. Believe it or not, I don't have any time to play Mr. Triple Agent for the stupid organization from G3. What are you doing here? What else can I be doing here? Our boss ga gave me clear instructions to make sure you succeed in your mission. <clears throat> but it seems that you have everything under control. However, you... You know very well who the actual killer is, don't you? Just what what the hell happened back there? I thought he was good. He was good at this. But how could he screw up things this badly? <clears throat> Why don't you just go ask him yourself? He was tough as ever. Sue yourself then. I don't want to give a damn about that guy's past. But do we really have to pin it on that woman from the same floor? Each sacrifice for the future of the company, each one is necessary. What? So Venora's in on it? Tch. Our boss is really getting to you, isn't he? Company this, company that. that that's all he ever talks about. All of us are merely little pawns in his hands. What did you say? No offense. But this is nothing but a job to me. I'm not trying to debate the ethics of, of what we do, nor am I interested in his great vision. And why do you use your brain? Why don't you use your brain for once and think about what you, you truly want instead of being a slave to his company all day? What I truly want? You know, finding the love of your life, forming a family, that sort of thing. Don't end up like me, an old guy who doesn't have a single clue what he should be doing with his life. Hmm. It's been an exhausting day. I'll see you later.
He was about to turn to leave, but he suddenly stopped again. He once again turned his head at me. Venora, did you come up with that name yourself? Yes. <coughs> the ever so gloomy look on his face usually perked, unusually perked up out of nowhere. I didn't think you'd be so good at, na at naming yourself. That's a really nice name. Well, why don't you keep it for yourself? <coughs> With that, he put on his, his police hat again. <coughs> See you later, Venora. Make sure you to report that guy on time. He's kind of anal about it. With that, he disappeared across the street and once again became part of the crowd. Finding the love of my life and starting my own family? Is that still possible for someone like me? What am I thinking? No matter what, my mission here is accomplished. As long as G4 Physicist Bureau can't figure out who the true killer is, everything will still be un under out of control. It is time for me to move on to my next destination and complete my next mission. G4 Suburbs. The mansion of Meyer's former lawyer and trader. Wait, what? Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Vincent Edgeworth. That's how I ended up there. My name's not Leia, it's Venora. Vincent Edgeworth, that name, I remember now. That man is far more frightening than Myers. I've been set up. I have to get out of here. I have to get is that my name I'm hearing, Leia? Or should I call you... Venora? Oh my god! Whoa, 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 whoa! So wait, that's what I look like? Dude! So my name's not Leia, it's Venora! Chapter 3, End. Oh, really? Vincent Edward, is it? Welcome to RMU. Here's, your, here's the key to your dorm. Enjoy meeting your new roommate. Hmm. New roommate. Pardon me. Is anyone there? I'm coming in. Victor! Yo! He looks so much different! Oh, hello there. Pleasure to meet you. You're Vincent, right? <coughs> Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm your roommate, Victor Blake. I'm majoring in economics. This is an incredible chance of fate for us to meet each other at this place, don't you think? An incredible chance of fate? Don't make me laugh. Everything exists for a reason. Our life experiences are shaped by our own actions, not fate. <laughs> if you say so. But that also means there has to be a reason for both of us to be standing here, correct? I'd rather live in a single room. I see that you're a pretty straightforward guy, huh? I understand. First day of school is always quite nerve-wracking, isn't it? But you can quote me on this. I'm sure we're going to, have, going to become great friends. <clears throat> anyway, shall we start with some simple introduction? Why don't we get to know each other a bit first? Which district are you from, Vincent? The G4 district. G4, is it? Same here. Then it looks like we're both domestic students. What do you like about G4? Where do you usually go to have fun? I... I don't really go out much. <coughs> I see. 
What about hobbies? What do you like to do in your spare time? I enjoy reading about history and philosophy. Oh, that's exciting. What else? That's it. Is that enough? I see. It seems like you've been working pretty hard, huh, Vincent? You think I'm boring? No, no. Why would I? If anything, I should learn to be more like you. Anyways, I heard that there's going to be a freshman party tonight. Would you like to come with me, Vincent? Not interested. <laughs> okay, well, what's wrong with making some new friends? Do I look like I'm here to make friends? You obviously, you absolutely have absolutely no clue how much work I've put in over the last few years being accepted at RMU. RMU is a well-deserved milestone for me. But all the other idiots here think that just by getting here, it means they have won in life. All the G4 students, <coughs> even people from their districts, want to study in the prestigious school. <coughs> but for those people, those three letters of RMU merely serve as a title for them to show off. The true reason for them to celebrate on the first day is that their goal was just to get admitted here. I see that you have pretty high expectations as for others as well, huh, Vincent? However, please allow me to disagree with you. you. You're wrong to assume that the students here are celebrating just because they believe in school. Sorry, I skipped it. <laughs> Perhaps to them, RMU symbolizes a new beginning of a new chapter in their life. I could care less about what they think. What remains unchanged is is that they're wasting their time. But I am different. I still know, I still have a long way to go. We're at the top of the university in the G4 district, and not to mention we're the most competitive one. Our music acceptance rate is only 4.5%. And because of that, I will cherish my time here even more. I'll be focusing on my studies and only my studies, nothing else. The competition is far from over, and if I dawdle, it will be no different than admitting defeat to others. I will only consider my subject success when I get hired by that place. By that place? Well, 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 let me guess. You Could you possibly be aiming for the Myers Corporation? That's hilarious. Are you mocking me? Oh no, don't get me wrong. I just think Vincent's adorable. So adorable that I want to laugh. I was worried for a second that my roommate was going to be boring as hell. But now I see that I was terribly wrong. Every word you say can entertain me all day long. What did you just say? My dear Vincent, do you mind if I ask what your major is? I'm a law student. Law student, huh? Indeed, you certainly look like an engineering student. You don't look like an engineering student. Do you really think studying hard is going to, is all you need to get into the top company of G4? Quit joking around. Pure, ha pure hard work is not the only thing that matters to the workplace. Socializing is also an integral part, and this is especially important for your chosen profession. With such a lousy personality, I shudder to think of the lonely life you'd lead. Even if you get into Myers Corporation, you'll just be ostracized by everyone. Your co-workers won't like you, and your boss will just think you're useless and incapable of understanding the ways of the world. It will be your fate to end up an outcast and be forced to leave the Myers Corporation because you don't belong there. Oh, wait. Or should I say, this will be a life experience shaped by your own actions. But since you've already made up your mind, there's nothing I can do about it. I respect your decision. But if you change your mind any time, please feel free to join us at the party. I hope to see you at the freshman party, Vincent. We'll catch up later.
Unforgivable. <coughs> he had such a sickening smile on his face. And his words were filled with nothing but sarcasm. I resent his hypocritical, arrogant scums like him more than those unprotective good unproductive good for nothing students. Mine is outcast. My destiny is be is mine to decide. I have not asked for your worthless opinions and certainly don't need a loser like you to mock my dreams. I should be thinking about these I shouldn't be thinking about these useless matters. Thank God he's left the room. It'll give me at least one more night alone. Instead of getting in indignant about a guy like that, I might as well use my evening to improve my knowledge for them all. So which book should I start with today? Being in Nothingness, Republic, The Birth of Tragedy. Hmm. Why don't I start with Le Leviathan today? From this diff and from this diffidence of one another, there is no way for any man to secure himself as reasonable for anticipation. That is by force or wiles <clears throat> to master all the persons of all men he can so long till he see no other power great enough to endanger him. Victor Blake was his name, wasn't it? Come to think of it, he was my first roommate and the first person I ever met. Maybe I shouldn't give, have given him a cold shoulder on the first day. It wasn't the wisest thing to do. <clears throat> After all, I will be spending most of my time here in this tiny room with him. No, that's not true. I should be able to move out and live alone next year. I have no reason to put a smile for this guy, and I'm not in the mood to do that. <laughs> Law can never be against reason. Our lawyers are agreed. And that's, and that's not the letter, that is very construction of it, but, but that which is according to the intention of the legislator is the law. It's 12 o'clock, when is that guy going to return? Why am I thinking about him? His lifestyle is definitely none of my business. It feels as if I'm eagerly waiting for him to come back. I don't understand. Not that, the, not that the death of one man, though without sin, can satisfy for those offenses of all men. In the rigor of justice, but in the mercy of God, that ordained such sacrifices for sin as he was pleased from his mercy to accept.
It's 3.30 in the morning. This is inexcusable. Victor, on your very first day at RMU, all you do is party until the wee hours of the morning. Where did you get the confidence to speak to me like that? Hmm. Maybe Vincent, maybe Vincent is worried. What was I even worried about? After all, I'll be spending this year alone again. But in this room, won't I? Oh? Geniuses are often born in isolation, with a lonely destiny. They often have a tendency for self-abandonment. To abandon everything for their ideals. <clears throat> Nothing is predestined in life. I've always believed that ever since I was a child, a person's destiny can change by no one but themselves. Ooh. Ordinary people obey fate. But the strong ones become rulers of their own destiny. To enter the Myers Corporation. To become creme de la creme of the creme de la creme. Is my goal. Ooh. But why? Why do I still feel so helpless sometimes? In the face of so-called fate. The real loneliness is a deep void, an emptiness that will strive you that will drive you crazy. Even in the midst of cheering, you feel nothing but emptiness, melancholy, and frustration inside you. <coughs> Whoa! When I stand in the middle of a crowd, I feel even more lonely and out of place than I do when I'm alone. I look at all the people drinking and chatting and can only ask myself, why don't I feel the same joy as they do? Have I really abandoned everything that I deserve to pursue my dream? Is the loneliness that I feel a price that I must pay? I know better than anyone else that coming here won't change anything. It's a brand new year. I hope all the misfortunes will go away. I'm going to be an adult soon. Perhaps I'll be more mature then. Or maybe I'll finally be able to make real friends when I go to my new school. Birthdays, New Year's, new schools. I have similar play prayers all my life. I've heard similar prayers all my life. Humans always like to place hopes on useless things that doesn't that make them feel like like the turnaround will come out of nowhere. They willingly blind themselves and are reluctant to see the truth that many of the changes in their lives need to be done by themselves. That will change in the new year if you do. What will change in a new year if you don't do anything? How will you become more mature if you don't even try to improve yourself? But in the end I realized I'm not really that different from them. I had hoped that my life would change when I come to RMU. I had hoped that I will find real friends at RMU. It's five in the morning. Looks like I won't be getting any sleep today. I 
parents will pack up and get ready for the first day of school. Hmm? Victor? Vin? Vincent? Are you still awake? I... I'm not feeling so well. I... I think I might be... Oh! Victor? Victor! Uh. Are you awake? Are you feeling- You're awake! Are you feeling any better? <coughs> hmm. <coughs> what time is it? How long have I been asleep? It's already noon. Oh god, I missed all my morning classes. Well, am I supposed to congratulate you? Not only that, but you've made me miss all my morning classes as well. I'm... I'm sorry. Perhaps you don't remember, but the, doc but the doctor from the infirmary has visited here. I was worried that you were seriously ill, but the doctor said that it seemed like a case of overexhaustion and stress. She said that with some rest, you should be able to recover soon. That's so. Thank goodness. But if that's the case, why are you still here with me? I guess I just wanted to make sure you were feeling better when you woke up with my own eyes. I wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to do, so I bought you a cup of hot chocolate. I also asked to make the phone up with the shape of a kitten. Aww, that's cute! That is so cute looking. Look at look at that. <laughs> What's so funny? No, nothing. But why, Vincent? After all that I said, to be honest, I better just turn a blind eye to you. I don't want to have anything to do with your life or death. But you're my roommate, so you're part of my responsibilities. I had no other choice. What were you thinking? Ruining your body by partying at the early hours of the morning and the day before school started. I didn't go. What? I didn't go to the freshman party. Then what were you doing all night? <sighs> Isn't it obvious? I wanted to get away from you. Get away from me? Am I that obnoxious to you? No, it's because of the things you said. I may not seem like it, but I haven't slept well for days on end. Rain to every night I am plagued by millions of thoughts. I never knew what I was going I never knew what I was going to do when I got here. Everything about the future terrifies me. My goal was to get accepted to RMU, but a lot of the time I felt like I was just carrying out my family's expectations of me. You have to make us proud. That's what my parents would say to me. But when I finally got here, I just felt lost and overwhelmed. I made it to RMU. I've succeeded, right? But then what? What happens after that? Why does anyone tell me what to do next? It was as if I was standing on the last step of my staircase, of a staircase, but it didn't lead anywhere. That's when I realized I had not a single clue what I wanted. Then, I met you. And 
and that feeling became stronger and stronger. Everything you you irrit everything about you irritated me. Your condescending attitude and the way you talked without any consideration for others made me want to punch you in the face. And if only that was the truth. One night spent in a cold sober the cold sobered me up. I was not actually angry with you. I was just disappointed in myself. Because you're different from me, Vincent. You're an admirable person. Unlike me and many of the students here. You know exactly what you want. You have a clear goal in my, a clear goal in your mind, and every drop of your effort goes towards it. You came here because you wanted to be here, and I came here simply because that what, that was what I had been told to do my whole life. The loss I felt for every for myself when I heard you say those words had never been stronger. But I was unwilling to face the truth, and I turned it into jealousy. I'm sorry, Vincent. I said terrible things to you. Huh? Are you blushing? No, no. I just didn't expect you to be so honest with me. It is, it is, is it because I called you an admirable person? <laughs> you enjoyed being complimented like that, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Aww, got to think of it. You, have, you still have class this afternoon, don't you? There's no point in staying here for me. In that case, I'll take my leave then. Two more things. Oh? First, maybe I don't fully understand how we feel, how you feel, and I'm not sure what to say to make you feel better. But you're here for four years, aren't you? I'm sure you'll find your goal eventually. A goal that's just for you. If all you need is someone to talk to when you're feeling down, I'll be here for you. Aw, that's super nice of him. Second, you have to you have the right to be angry with me if it makes if I make you upset. And I allow you to do that. Oh Victor's blushing now! See you this evening, Victor. Wait a minute, Vincent. Thanks for the hot chocolate. Hmm. And just like that, they become college. They became college roommates in the next four years. And why exactly are you telling me these? I know who you really are, infiltrator. And what you should what you should be scared of is if Monsieur M finds out, it'll be all over for you. But I know what you want. Believe it or not, to a certain extent, we actually share the same goal. <coughs> same goal. Say, want to collaborate with me collaborate with me, my dear infiltrator? Vincent Edgeworth. It's been a long time, Venora. A long time? Didn't we just meet last night? Indeed. In a sense, we did. But I'm sure you'll agree that we're all more than just mindless walking corpses, aren't we? Venora. Have you ever considered what, what decides someone's personality? Well, it should be obvious that none of us were born with a fixed personality. A person's character can change based on their living environment. 
their family upbringing, how they behave around them. In other words, their life experience forged their personalities, or should I say, their memories. Correct. That means that depending on a number of memories we we collected, a person's demeanor and mannerisms will also change somewhat. It's obvious to me that the woman standing in front of me right now is not the same person as the one I saw last night. By the way, I must comment, the new, your new glove suits you very well. Lara. Ooh, oh, I love her voice. <laughs> However, what I'm curious to know is, how much of your memory has truly come back? Only a bit. I remember that I was a detective from the G4 Investigation Bureau. I remember that I came to your mansion to investigate the case of missing citizens over recent years, and the truth behind the G4 cyborg incident. And after that, I don't remember what happened after that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Is that so? I don't like the look on his face. That's fine. We should take, care, take everything one step at a time, wouldn't you agree? It's certainly not a wise idea to, to rush things. Vincent, you knew exactly who I was all along. Why were you hiding everything from me? Me? Hiding everything? You've got it all wrong, madam. If I didn't wish to help you, I, why would I go through all this trouble to offer you leads? That business, that business card? It was your intention to give me that business card that, to leave me to Myers Corporation to find my memories? You have a special power in you, don't you? As I expected, you discovered it as well. You're able to see the past memories contained in certain objects. That's the case. If that's the case, do you even need me to tell you about your past? Even if I had told you the truth while we were in the mansion. It would be nothing more than just a bedtime story for you. It wouldn't have helped you find your true self, would it? In other words, you wanted me to utilize this power for myself so I could truly realize my own past. I don't believe anything you say. You have no reason to help me at all. As a former lawyer of my corporation, you pinned all the blame on Winston for the G4 cyborg incident. You were willing to do anything to get what you wanted what you were after. There has to be another reason for you to do everything you did for me. I don't care what's going on between you and the Myers Corporation at the present time, but what I do know is you're not a righteous person and cannot be trusted. A righteous person? <laughs> oh no. What's going on? <laughs> but Nora, with all due respect, you're even more humorous without your memory than with it. <sighs> Have you ever heard of something like this, Minora? Kill one man and you were a murderer. Kill millions of men and you were a conqueror. Kill them all and you were a god. And how would you define a righteous person, Venora? Are you telling me that you think you qualify as one? In this world, there is nothing that is absolutely right, nor is there anything that's absolutely wrong. The essence of good and evil is just really is really just success and failure. It's just a matter of different perspectives. All things considered, all things could be just from one point of view, but maybe immoral from another. But maybe but maybe moral from another. Hmm. But that doesn't really matter, matter either. In the end, none of us are entitled to stand for what we think is the right, is right to criticize others. 
Every human being, living and dead, every species, has done selfish things for their own benefit. But humans, and only humans, have invented one set of set of moral concepts after another to justify their self-centered actions. How many things that used to be considered taboo are now acceptable? And how many things that were considered harmless in the past are now unacceptable? Righteousness and wickedness, justice and evil, these are just fabrications created by human society. As time passes, as the ruling groups change, change they find that the reasoning of the past no longer justifies their actions today. Time and time again, humans find new justifications and rewrite their norms over and over again. In order to label themselves as righteous, to stand in the shoes of the omniscient God, to, and to judge others by their so-called morality. <coughs> but these moral judgments of, of good and evil cannot exist until they are decreed by society's central authority. Once removed from legal and social constraints, these definitions no longer hold water. What exactly are you getting at? Oh, I'm screenshotting that. That is totally a thumbnail. <coughs> Heroes and villains don't exist. All that really exists are losers and winners. Become a winner in society, become the conqueror of a world, and you will be on the right side of history. By the same token, become a loser, and you will be on the side of wrongdoing. It is not up to you or me to decide who is righteous between us. <clears throat> it all depends on who comes out on top, right? Hmm. Not only that, but the tip of the iceberg you're remembering now only serves to distort the truth. When you get all your memories back, perhaps you will be enlightened. You will understand why I have done all those things. But of course, I don't really care about that either. The thoughts of winning your approval have n has never crossed my mind once, Venora. Nor do I need it all. At all. I never said. I never said what you did was without reason, Vincent. On the contrary, I'm pretty sure that you have. I'm pretty sure that you do have one. Righteous or not, all I want is the truth and only the truth. The truth, is it? I see. In that case, may I offer you a proposition? Why don't we explore the room together? The room filled with truth. Are you saying that's correct? The secret chamber to the G4 cyborg incident is hidden somewhere in this room. <coughs> what do you think, Venora? Why not use your power to solve the mystery here? Hmm. Also, don't mind me, I just got a soda. Objective, locate the secret chamber. <coughs> Alright guys, um, I think I'm going to leave it here for now. I've been recording for about two hours, so so hopefully, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this part. Um, uh, please leave a like, comment, share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a single notification. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye.